Uh, but first up is the current crisis, the ongoing crisis. It really has never ended. Uh, the president beat back acquittal, but the coup has never stopped. The pressure on him continues, uh, and it's just a matter of where it's coming from. Uh, initially came from the Obama administration with the illegal spying on him. It came from the Clinton campaign that was working all the various government agencies, the State Department, the CIA, uh, the Defense Department, the FBI, the DOJ, all to launch spy efforts against the president based on lies. Uh, and then the president becomes president. State Department's pushing garbage information out, trying to undermine the president. Uh, we have that information. You have James Comey going to overdrive to try to destroy the president with, uh, by uh, trying to spy on him personally and directly, and then by leaking documents. They had the Mueller appointment, which was uh, two years of harassment of the president of the United States, trying to entrap him and figure out ways to put him in jail, despite their no, but despite everyone involved knowing there never was any Russia collusion and therefore never any good faith basis to investigate him. That collapses. They move on to the coup, uh, uh, the next phase of the coup, which was the Ukraine corruption. Uh, scandal that was more about Biden's scandal than anything the president had done. That coup was shattered in the Senate. And so uh, within a week, within a week, they've concocted another scandal, uh, which is somehow some politicization of the Justice Department, when in fact you've had uh, deep state actors in the Justice Department involved in everything I've been talking about, uh, once again rear their ugly heads. Uh, to try to smear the president of the United States, vindicate Robert Mueller's sham investigation, and uh, in doing so, undermine the rule of law. So on the specifics, the week began with Roger Stone uh, being uh, further abused by the Justice Department. Outrageously, uh, the Attorney General of the United States, Bill Barr, and his leadership team uh, left in place after Mueller, uh, uh, Mueller's investigation ended uh, the Mueller team that was involved in prosecuting Stone. So essentially, the same group that had targeted Stone for Mueller continued to target Stone for Barr. Now, given all the improprieties of the Mueller investigation, all the questions about its origination, uh, which was infected uh, by the fraudulent dossier the Justice Department admitted was false uh, in terms of, um, uh, admitted was the basis for the false FISA affidavits. Uh, despite the president, uh, Attorney General Barr and Durham uh, suggesting that the whole genesis of the investigations targeting Trump that led ultimately to Stone's prosecution a year, year and a half later, almost two years later, uh, was suspect. And uh, despite all the public concerns about Mueller hiring a bunch of Democrats and Clinton donors and Obama donors and Democratic donors and activists to man his prosecution team, despite all of that, Barr leaves in place those individuals. So surprise, surprise, a week after the president's acquittal, they concoct a scheme that uh, has resulted in another scandal. It's a fake scandal, but it's a scandal nevertheless because the media is trying to uh, uh, is causing, uh, uh, the media and their allies are, are causing problems for the president again. But the fake scandal is that uh, somehow the president of the United States is not able to supervise the Justice Department. He's not allowed to talk about the Justice Department. And how did this erupt? It erupted because these Mueller operatives, of the four prosecutors that were involved in the Mueller, uh, in, excuse me, in the Stone prosecution team, I think three of them work for Mueller, three of them are registered Democrats, and they went into the judge and said that Mueller, uh, excuse me, that Stone deserves seven to nine years. When in fact, when you look at the crimes he committed, uh, any reasonable reading of the sentencing guidelines would be three to four, if that. And what is the difference between the two recommendations? Well, they say he made a threat. And what happened is he called a friend of his who uh, was somehow involved in discussions about trying to communicate with WikiLeaks and things like that. And uh, he said he saw he was cooperating with, I think, Congress at the time. And he called up and he started making absurd threats to him, saying, I'm going to kill your dog and things like that. 
threats which we're not taking seriously. And obviously we're met not seriously, but it was enough to get him convicted as witness tampering and things like that and making threats. So these deep state prosecutors uh, suggested to the judge that she needs to consider these threats as serious, even though the witness himself, the target of the threats, didn't take them seriously. And they also implied falsely that the Stone prosecution was part of foreign intervention in our elections. He wasn't charged with anything related to that. And they also suggested he should go to jail for a longer period of time because uh, he had violated a gag order during the trial. He wasn't prosecuted for that. So obviously a punitive, abusive use of their powers as prosecutors to try to put Ameri an American citizen in jail longer than necessary. How do I know it's longer than necessary? Because Bob Barr's Justice Department, once it became public to much outrage that they were seeking seven to nine years for Roger Stone, when the entire Obama-Clinton gang are walking around free, Barr admits he looked at that and said this can't be true, and it turned out it was true, and they had to file another brief stepping back from those recommendations and highlighting that the sentencing guidelines at most would put Stone away for four years, which in my, in my view is still too long. And as this is all happening, the president tweets out quite appropriately, this is a miscarriage of justice and complains otherwise. And so uh, after the Justice Department, as the Justice Department is retreating and suggesting that those lawyers in doing so may have violated the rules, that's the way I read it, all those lawyers pull back from the case. They withdraw from the case, seen as a protest. So trap laid, trap set, trap triggered. Barr walked into it. New scandal. Now, of course, the real scandal is you had Justice Department prosecutors abuse their position to try to put an American in prison longer than necessary. And Barr had to take steps to intervene to stop that abuse of power. Instead, the fake scandal is the President of the United States did something wrong about, by complaining about Justice Department misconduct. And Barr fell into the trap. He gave an interview saying, the president's tweets make my job harder. Make it, wait, he actually said, make it impossible for him to do his job. I would suggest what makes it impossible for him to do his job, as properly defined, is the corruption of people he leaves in place around him. I mean, we had the FISA court of the United States, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, essentially announced to the world in an order just a few months ago, it can't believe anything the FBI and Justice Department have to say on FISA warrants, the most sensitive warrants the government can probably pursue. We have the Justice Department admit two warrants targeting the President of the United States, two spy warrants, all signed off and approved on by both the FBI and Justice Department were false meaning criminal in nature, when you're lying to the court and falsely presenting information to the court to get a warrant on someone, you're committing crimes. And we're all supposed to be worried that the president is tweeting? I like Attorney General Barr, but I think he, he's, call, he's making the wrong call here or taking the wrong approach in suggesting that it's inappropriate for the president to tweet about the Justice Department. This is the, this is the strategy of the Kukabal, the deep state, the Clinton-Obama gang, the administrative state, the permanent bureaucracy, however you want to call it. They, are, they don't want the president to be president. They don't want him to fire people. They don't want him to talk to foreign leaders. They don't want him to have the ability to take out terrorists abroad. 
They don't want him to protect the security of the United States. They don't want him to run the Justice Department. They don't want him to appoint judges. Well, how do I know that? Because they tried to remove him from office based on a fraudulent charge. And they're suggesting he's committing crimes by doing his job. You fire Comey, which is his right as president, you're, doing a, you're committing a crime. You ask a foreign leader to assure him, the President Trump, to assure President Trump that our, our taxpayer funds aren't being wasted on a corrupt, on a corrupt government abroad. Let's remove her from office for talking like that. And now the latest is the president can't talk about the Justice Department. Now, if the president had called Attorney General Barr up and said what was going on and that became public, do you think that would be a scandal too? Of course it would be. Because the President Trump is not allowed to do the things a normal president is able to do. Because they hate Trump and they, in my view, they see him as a threat. And of course, they want to freeze the Justice Department. And how do you freeze the Justice Department? By presuming any activity that targets the Clinton slash Obama gangs is inappropriate. And any activity to rein in the corruption targeting the Trump gang is inappropriate. So it results in the Trump gang, Trump allies, getting improperly targeted and prosecuted and jailed, and it, and it results in the Obama-Clinton world walking away scot-free. That's the crisis of the Justice Department. The crisis of the Justice Department isn't P President Trump tweeting. It's Justice Department employees, attorneys, most of whom are Democrat partisan liberal activists abusing the powers entrusted to them by the American people to act in a corrupt way. They think they can get away with it too. I mean, these four lawyers who tried to punish Stone inappropriately, they should be subject to investigation. And as, to, as if to confirm that the Justice Department is, is just so thoroughly corrupted, they announced this week, excuse me, just today, that Andrew McCabe won't be prosecuted for what looks to be his admitted lies to investigators about his involvement in leaks. I think he lied four times, according to the IG, that referred him to Justice Department, to the Justice Department for Criminal Investigation almost two years ago. I think it was in April 2018. So the week begins with a slap at Trump, and it ends with a slap at Trump. Decision made, at least it was signed off on by a deep stater who's been there forever at the Justice Department. The same lawyer, by the way, who um, also was responsible for the Awan brothers plea deal. Did you know that? Remember that plea deal with the Debbie Washerman Schultz Democratic IT scandal? Many people criticize that plea deal has a slap on the wrist. So Andrew McCabe is facing no prosecution for lying repeatedly on a sensitive investigation he not, not only lied to IG investigators at the DOJ, he lied, it looks like, to FBI investigators as well. And Roger Stone is going to go to jail if the judge follows, his, follows the sentencing guidelines for up to four years. And the only reason that's happening is because the corrupt deep staters, the Mueller operatives at the Justice Department were caught People were sensitive to this and they actually stopped it. I mean, so I've got two, I'm of two minds on Barr. He fell into a trap and talked about the problem the wrong way and talking about Trump, but he deserves credit for coming in and stopping the corruption. And now I'm of three minds because frankly, the corruption should never have allowed to get that far. He should have frozen everything related to Mueller and he still should. Now he's being criticized because he's got an outside team reportedly looking at Flynn. So stop blaming the president. 
The problem is your Justice Department's out of control. And the president has a positive constitutional obligation. And when I say positive means that he's got to do it. His job, his duties, and responsibilities require it to confront Justice Department corruption. He sees they're about to abuse American citizen. He should, he should speak up. Now, if he had called Barr directly and said, you got to do something about it, they would have gone after him. So he resorts to going on Twitter. And there's this big lie that presidents can't talk about prosecutions and can't direct constitution, uh, prosecutions. That's not true. A, it's not a constitutional point of view. It's a political point of view that presumes that the Justice Department is independent. If the Justice Department is independent, then the Justice Department should be shut down because it would be unconstitutional. The Justice Department is designed to implement, enforce the rules of our land. And those powers flow mostly from the President of the United States. They report to him, not the other way around. President Reagan ordered the Justice Department to stop a criminal investigation into British Airways. I think in 1982. It was a criminal um, antitrust investigation. He said, stop it. President George H.W. Bush, remember after the Rodney King riots? Uh, the police officers were acquitted from the criminal charges. There were all, all this rioting. Immediate, within an hour, he said, he called the Justice Department, told the Justice Department, I want you to investigate those police officers, and he boasted about having federal prosecutors on the plane within a day or two. Five federal prosecutors. Go look it up. Forget when the riots were, 1992. And then there's uh, numerous instances of Barack Obama boasting about his connections and his involvement and his direction to the Justice Department, specifically in the Eric Gardner case, who was a, a person who uh, was killed in, uh, during a struggle with the police and New York, and they were, uh, I think the police were acquitted, and basically Obama boasted that he was making sure Eric Holder was pursuing civil rights charges against these officers. The president has a constitutional duty, authority, and frankly, given the breakdown at the Justice Department, a heightened duty to take action and run the Justice Department or make sure it's being run effectively and efficiently. Because the Justice Department is behaving in a way, despite Barr's best efforts, and we can argue about it, whether they're best or not, you know I'm suspect, Justice Department needs to reassure us that they're fairly administering justice. And they're not. Not if you're connected, not if you're powerful in the, in the liberal sense of the word. Justice Department had uh, two referrals, one on James Comey for illegally leaking President Trump's FBI files, including classified information lying about it, lacking candor, referred to Barr's DOJ for prosecution, wasn't prosecuted. Andrew McCabe, referred for uh, lying about leaking, wasn't prosecuted, referred by the IG. There's no evidence, and I'll say it again, there's no evidence of a serious criminal investigation into the legal spying on President Trump. There's a New York Times story out today or this week, depending on when you're hearing this, but go look it up. And the New York Times, of course, is being dishonest and they're kind of acting as a defense counsel for the Obama gang being investigated by Durham. So they're investigating the CIA and how they handled Russia interference and buried in the story is the lead that the Obama White House actually interfered with the Russia interference investigation. 
and that Obama's emails have been hacked. And so the supposition is, and the, and the conclusion is, that there may have been actually cover-up orchestrated by the Obama White House. So that's one element of the story. The other element of the story, Durham doesn't seem to be doing a criminal investigation. It looks like he's doing a glorified IG investigation. There's no indication he's doing a criminal investigation. Now, in theory, he could do a glorified IG investigation and then refer people for prosecution. When is that going to happen? Do you have any confidence it will happen? I can hope it will happen. But we see what's happening at the Justice Department. In the case of the Stone case, you know what happened? They had an acting U.S. attorney come in at the last minute, appointed by Barr, who in theory was supervising these Mueller operatives targeting Stone. And there was, they were trying to push for this abusive sentence. And this U.S. attorney, acting U.S. attorney, said no. And they said, well, if you don't agree, we'll pull out of the case. And so he caved and let them file the brief. That's what the reports are. Who's running the Justice Department? And I guarantee you that story goes on all the time. We just had a story last week I told you about. Duncan Hunter, a former Republican congressman, he's former because he had to resign last month, was prosecuted. I think there were 69 criminal charges filed against him and his wife. Basically an absurd indictment. And he and his wife, I think, pled guilty to one minor charge, and he's facing sentencing next month. And one of his uh, issues he tried to raise with the court was that the prosecutors here have it in for me. They're Clinton. They're Clintonites. They went to a Clinton fundraiser. And the response from the Justice Department and the Secret Service was they were there to provide advice, prosecutorial advice in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in case of a security in incident which just sounds absurd on its face. That's just obviously false, but the court bought it. And um, so we asked about what went on there. We've received the documents for uh, FBI, uh, excuse me, Justice Department emails, thanks to a lawsuit we filed, and they show they weren't there for security. They were there because they wanted to be there. They talk about how fabulous the party was. So all of that implies, A, they lied to the court, and maybe Duncan Hunter shouldn't be facing jail because of that corruption. Attorney General Barr needs to focus on the corruption in his own agency and pay attention to the president's concerns about this. Like I said, almost, I like Barr. This is, frankly, the only public comments he's made, you know, I, I don't want to exaggerate too much because I'm sure I disagree with him on other stuff, where he... He got it wrong as to the crisis the Justice Department faces. And I'm, after all this settles down, I was on uh, Lou, Dobbs this, Lou Dobbs this week, and I encourage you to write, uh, watch the interview. Because this, this dispute between Barr and, and Trump, it's not a real dispute. It's going to move on, move forward. But Barr needs to understand that it's about him. They are still concerned, despite my skepticism that they have good reason to be concerned, they're still concerned, and we can always maintain hope that something will be done, that the Clinton gang and Obama gang will get prosecuted for what they did to Trump and other innocent Americans. And they want to stop that from happening. So don't be distracted by the fight about tweets. Focus on the fact that Justice Department is corrupt and out of control. Barr barely has control of the agency. He is surrounded by on all sides in terms of the media, within the agency, and in Congress by people who don't want him to do what the law requires or what justice demands in terms of Obama and Clinton. And you see they have this internal effort to try to destroy him, make him, you know, trip him up and as I say he doesn't even have enough control to ensure that justice is done without his personal intervention I mean, that's how out of control things are in the Justice Department it's over a hundred I think they have over a hundred thousand people who work there hundred thousand people I want you to go back and look at another, I, by the way, I, I, this, uh, this is another reminder. Go back and look at our case, the Black Panther case that we exposed. 
where the Justice Department Career Civil Service had the Black Panthers dead to rights, New Black Panther Party up in Philadelphia standing outside a polling place with truncheons. And um, they, I don't think they showed up in court. They, so, you know, they were going to win. And so Obama appointees came in and shut the case down. They lied that there were political appointees who made the decision and pretended it was career appointees. That wasn't the case. So the next time you hear about, well, it's terrible if the Justice Department is run by the White House or political appointees, that's just bunk. They're just trying to ensure that their allies in the bureaucracy can continue to commit misconduct and put people in jail who don't belong there. So our Republic totters and we're supposed to be talking about the president's tweets, I ain't gonna do it. As far as I'm concerned, the president should tweet more. The president's general tweeting, who agrees with everyone, who agrees with every tweet someone puts out? That's not the issue. I'm sure I can look at some tweets I've put out and say, boy, I wish I had said that differently or look at that typo or boy, did I get that wrong? We've got a Justice Department who was caught this week trying to put a man in jail for an unnecessarily long period of time. Four extra years, all to score political points, to make Trump look embarrassed, help vindicate the Mueller operation by giving it another big sentence it could tout to justify its sham abuse of the rule of law. And what's Judicial Watch doing? We're fighting it all. And I wish Attorney General Barr would spend more time focusing on why his Justice Department is defending the indefensible. They're protecting Andrew McCabe, not giving us his text messages. They're protecting Page and Strzok by slow walking the release of documents. They're even protecting Barack Obama. Remember Barack Obama? He was president of the United States, right? He was interviewed by the FBI, and there's a report about that interview. It's about the sale of his Senate seat. We can't get it from the Justice Department. One of the few 302s we can't get. They're just making up new excuses not to give it to us. This Justice Department. This Justice Department sent six lawyers to court just a few weeks ago, middle of December, to try to shut down our efforts to question Hillary Clinton. This Justice Department is defending virtually every effort to stall the release of records about every major scandal you care about. But whoa, we don't want the president tweeting about that, right? Wrong. The president often retweets me, often retweets Judicial Watch. My guess is he thinks we're doing more work than the Justice Department on the corruption issues the American people care about. And it doesn't mean Barr's doing nothing. That's not my point. The point is the Justice Department needs to be a focus of significant reform and we need to have high expectations and a recognition that they've been out of control and there's got to be serious justice. The fact there's no major special counsel, no major grand jury or criminal investigation of anyone is one of the most alarming developments in our criminal justice system and our justice system generally that I can think of in recent American history. The fact that Judicial Watch is almost alone in trying to get documents about the spying on the President of the United States, what does that tell you? It tells you the Justice Department's asleep at the switch. And Barr may be trying, but I, you know what he should say? I'm trying, but this Justice Department's out of control. Yes, the pre I saw this, look at what happened here. We had prosecutors that I trusted that tried to abuse their power to target a defendant, and I had to intervene. That's terrible. The president tweeted about it. He was concerned. I'm concerned, too. We were already on top of it. That's what he should have said. 
So we're just gonna keep on suing. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.